Sometimes we feel like David in 1 Samuel chapter 30. David made some big mistakes. He went to go fight with people that he was not supposed to fight with. There we go. And he wasn't even invited to the fight. Just a little side note for us. Sometimes we get ourselves into trouble because we try to, we try to fight battles God never told us to fight. And God got a hold of David in this situation because David failed. So David, he failed miserably. He came, he came back home to Ziklag to find that his wife and his wives and his children had all been taken captive by the Amalekites. It was, it was at this point David turned his heart back to God. He sought God's will and God's word for his life. He asked God if he could go back and fight and get their wives and children all back. And God said yes. So the Bible tells us, you read the story yourself in 1 Samuel 29 and 30. The Bible says they recovered all. Somebody shout all. Sometimes we make mistakes where we lose it all. God doesn't kick us when, it, when we're down. God, God picks us up. We serve a God who picks us up in our lowest moments. And the Bible says... The Bible says that David recovered all. Small to great. Nothing was left missing. Sometimes we lose things. Some things need to go from our lives completely. But God is a God of recovery. When we're walking in confusion, God will help us to recover our mind, the mind of Christ. Shout he's a God of recovery. No. He's a God of recovery. Shout recovery. Secondly, God says, uh, he speaks the word overflow to us. He crowns the year with bounty. And our wagon tracks overflow. With his abundance. God is a God of overflow. There have been areas in our lives where we've been walking in lack. And God says this is a year of overflow. Next he spoke the word advancement. Jer Jeremiah 46.3 Advancement It says prepare buckler and shield And advance for battle We're going to get back to this later on No more sitting still no more, no more being a spectator. God says it's time to face your giant. Am I, am I in the right church tonight? God is saying it's time for you to advance.
to advance in your purpose and to advance in the plans of God for your life. God, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Say, I can do it. Say, I will advance. And we're going to do it through the power of His Spirit, and we're going to accomplish great things for His glory. Finally, the last word that He gave me was restoration. Jeremiah 46.3 have you ever felt defeated before? Have you ever felt like you'll never be what you thought you were going to be or what God had for you? We serve a God who restores. He restores our joy. He restores our purpose. He restores life in us. I want to encourage you tonight. I got to move on quickly. But it's up to you to recover your passion for Jesus. Over these next few days, open up your heart to receive the overflowing power of the Holy Spirit. When you go back to your home, get ready to advance in the battle. In your school, in your neighborhood, wherever God has placed you, advance for the battle. And hear me carefully. It's up to each of us to restore. The, the priority of God's word and disciplined prayer into our lives. God brought us all together in this divine moment to be encouraged and equipped and filled with his Holy Spirit to bring in a mighty harvest for his glory somebody give him praise for that <laughs> for all of this year God has been speaking in our church about restoration overflow, advancement and recovery he's almost, almost on a weekly basis he speaks to us a fresh word about roar and the Lord wanted me to share a, a word with you tonight about roar. It's found in Revelation 19. Let, let's read this. I heard again what sounded like the shout of a vast crowd. Through <laughs> Or I don't want to do this real quick. 
This is the, this is the center line right here. This side over here, I want you to say this. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Say it again. Praise the Lord. I want you to shout over here. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Praise the Lord. Concerts. I've been at World Changers a few times. I was a little nervous this afternoon because I thought the floor was going to break over in there because there was a roar of praise. There's a generation that knows how to lift up the roar of praise to our King. I want to ask you a question tonight. Do you hear the roar? Oh, I'm talking about a different roar. Do you hear the roar? No, listen to me. Do you hear the roar from your generation? The roar of hopelessness. The roar of confusion and chaos. The, the, the roar of rebellion to the ways of God. Have you, have you heard that sound? Have you heard that sound? Just a wave offering if you've heard that sound. Don't, don't be freaked out if you hear that sound. Don't get, don't get nervous if it seems like it's getting darker. I found that God does his best work when it gets the darkest. Paul and Silas were in jail one time at midnight when it was really dark. They were strapped to a prison wall. They had chains on their hands and their feet. It was a terrible place to be. And they looked at one another. And he said, we could complain. Or we can worship. We can complain because it's so dark. We can complain and grumble because what they're doing to us is so wrong. But why don't we pray? Why don't we just lift our voice and pray? The Bible says, let me sing a song. They begin to pray and sing. Pray and sing. Pray and sing. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. The victory does not come from our flesh. It comes from the spirit. When it's dark, praise the name of Jesus. When it's dark, Worship the King of Glory. The Bible says, as they begin to praise God, there was an earthquake. Maybe that's what we are feeling over there today. There was an earthquake that shook the jail. And the Bible says that all the cells flew open. And every one of the prisoners came out into freedom. And the jailer said, what am I going to do? I'm going to kill myself. And they said, no, don't do that. And they won him and his family to Jesus. It's dark out there right now. 
planeta Kiroma. But we need to hear the worship from young people. There needs to be a fresh glow of praise from young people. Young people, 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 young Praise the Lord. See, praise, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 You guys are really loud tonight. But you better get ready. There's a sound coming that we've never heard before. There's a, there's a sound coming that's going to shake the earth. There's a sound coming that's going to welcome the King of Glory. The, the, the nations are going to cry out, praise the Lord, our God reigns. Every tribe. Every tongue, every nation is going to join with us. Singing the song of praise to the Lord. Praise the Lord. John speaks to us in, in Revelation 19. And he says in so many words, the time has come. The time has come. What are we waiting for? We've been on pause way too long. We've been waiting on someone to do what God's called us to do. We talked about this a little bit in the worship session today. Not everybody in this room is going to be a full-time pastor. There might be a few missionaries here. But most in this room you're going to have a regular job. Believe it or not, men, some point you're going to get married and have a family. It, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. And you're going to live a life that seems to be normal. It seems to be natural. But in the Holy Spirit within us, we live a supernatural life. So if I'm on the trash truck picking up trash around town, I am a priest unto the Most High God. If I am a school teacher in the local school, those kids are my mission field. If you're a stay at home mom, you're, you're the priest or the pastor of that neighborhood. Look at your neighbor and tell them you are a priest to the Most High God. It's a holy calling. It's a holy purpose. The time has come. There's a banquet hall that's going to be filled. There's a banquet hall, a feast that's going to take place. I don't know why he had trouble translating that. <laughs> you folks know how to eat. <laughs> you know how to throw down some food. <laughs> but there's a big feast coming. There's going to be some heavenly food that we're going to partake of. But Jesus is saying to us tonight, I want my banquet hall full. 
See, he already has some seats assigned. But he's looking around and he's seeing there's some empty spaces. There's some tables that aren't yet filled with names. And he's looking over the portals of heaven tonight. And he's saying, world changers, your time has come. Lord Jesus, your time has come. We all have a circle of influence. Some have a larger circle than others. But you're not responsible for my circle. And I'm not responsible for your circle. I'm responsible for the vineyard God has planted me in. And likewise, you are as well. See, it's the king's desire that everyone is invited to his banquet.